The April 8th total solar eclipse is only a month away, but there's still time to buy safe solar eclipse glasses that follow the ISO standard. And you too can look as cool as I do. You don't look cool. Who said that? Last year, I reviewed eclipse glasses from four AS recognized manufacturers. And today, I'm going to review four additional eclipse products from three different manufacturers. The four products I'll be reviewing are solar eclipse glasses made by Daystar Filters, Flippin' Shades, and Celestron, along with a pair of 2X Celestron power viewers. My testing method is the same as last year, where I used a coffee cup sleeve rigged with some tape, uh, some cardboard and rubber bands that go on top of my 300 millimeter lens. So it looks kind of like this. I take it outside, I attach my eclipse glasses, and I take pictures of the sun. So one thing I'll note is that you should not use this kind of setup to take pictures of the sun at any time. I am risking my gear doing this, but I know what I'm doing, and I'm confident that I can do this safely without damaging my gear or my eyes. And my goal was to take pictures that replicate what I saw with my eyes. It's not easy to do, but I think I got pretty close. First up is Daystar Filters, and these glasses were purchased from B&H Photos in New York City. Both the manufacturer and the vendor are listed on the AS website. These are B&H branded glasses, and they conform to the ISO 12312-2 safety standards. These are silver black polymer, silver in front to help reflect away more of the sunlight. So I took these outside and I put them on and visually I was able to see the sun without any kind of straining for several minutes and they were comfortable the entire time. I also retested these after the other ones and noticed that the sun actually looked a little bit darker in these. Uh, well, the sun actually looked a little bit more orange. Uh, it's a different shade of orange. And this isn't something that you would typically notice with your glasses unless you're switching back and forth different brands like I was for this testing. I'll put this side by side with the Celestron glasses in a little bit so you know what I'm talking about. And putting these on, what I noticed is that the cardboard here is a little bit stiffer. So when I bent them, the outside part here kind of tore a little bit. It doesn't actually affect the integrity of the cardboard. It doesn't look like it'll fall off because the other side is still fine. When I popped these onto my camera and took a picture, this is what I saw. So this is at 300 millimeters ISO 200 at 1 200th of a second exposure. It looks pretty nice. The sunspot looked great, and you'll notice that there is an orange glow. So in my video last year, we saw something similar with all of the Eclipse glasses that had a silver black polymer. The only time we didn't see any glow at all was when we were using glasses with black black polymer. And so far out of the eight products that I reviewed, only one was black black polymer. And silver black polymer seems to be more of the norm in Eclipse glasses. And the orange glow is not really noticeable to the eye. It's just something that the camera sensor picks up because it's more sensitive, so it notices the subtleties more than our eyes do. You can get this from bhphotovideo.com and they cost $14.99 for a pack of 10. These were literally $11.99 just a day ago, but as I was finalizing my video, I realized that they changed the price, so I'm re-recording this piece. And a pack of 20 is $29.99. And unless you spend $49 at the store, expect to pay for shipping. So next up is Flippin' Shades. So these are actual products and they are safe for solar viewing and they are recognized by the AAS. So this is much sturdier because it's made of full plastic. So you can hear it and it's much stronger than the cardboard glasses that we use. And unlike the glasses, these are black on both sides so there's no silver reflection. And how these work is that there's a little clip here that go onto the brim of a cap like so and you put it on and you can flip this up and down and it goes over your glasses pretty well. I'm not a hat wearer, so if I look weird, don't judge me. And because I'm not a cap wearer, when I tested these outside, I put this uh, too far up the brim. So if you look at me here outside, you'll see that there's a bigger gap uh, between my glasses and the top of the hat. So I accidentally looked at the sun as I was looking away. Uh, not what I intended to do, but I think the tip here is try and wear this as close to your eyes as possible, try to make sure there's no gap, and be careful when you're looking away from the sun that the sun doesn't peek through the front and, and blind you. So this is going to my father-in-law who will be in Texas with us, and he knows how to wear baseball caps. So in terms of how it looked, the color of the sun looked the most different from any Eclipse product that I've used so far. Before I show you the picture itself, this is what the setup looked like outside. You'll notice that it was not tied to the adapter like the other glasses. It was I was just sitting it in front of the lens. 
It was impossible for me to focus with the sun with this thing in front. This is not an issue with your eyes. You won't have trouble focusing with your eyes with this in front of your eyes. I think it's just that because it was thicker plastic, the way the sunlight goes through this probably refracts in a certain way where the focal point of the lens just it's just different and I was not able to really focus. So here's the image and you can see that it is much blurrier, but look at the color, it's very yellow. It looks kind of cute. And it was indeed this yellow when I looked at it through my eyes. The sun looked very sharp when I looked visually. The sunspot looked great. The contrast between the yellow and the black of the sunspot looked really well. I didn't see any kind of glow around the sun like the silver black polymer uh, eclipse glasses. So these are pretty comfortable to wear. I wore these for a while just to look at the sun in yellow and I didn't feel any kind of eye strain. The sun looked great. And you can get this at flippinshades.com. They're $16 now and they ship very quickly. Uh, I believe when I ordered these, I got this within two and a half days or so of ordering. So there's still plenty of time to order these as long as they stay in stock. Next up is the Celestron Eclipse Smart Solar Eclipse Glasses. And these came pre-bent and this is a pack of four and it came with an observing kit, which is pretty much just a booklet that has information on the past October annular eclipse and this upcoming April total solar eclipse. And like the Daystar filter ones, these are silver black polymer. You'll notice that you know, when I zoom into the rim here, you'll see that it's pretty smooth. There's no breakage here and it feels pretty good. So I took them outside and I put them on. I tested them and they feel great. No eye strain. The color looked great. The contrast looked great. And overall, these are really well made. On my camera, I was able to focus on the sun. And here's a picture at 300 millimeters ISO 200 at 1 200th of a second once again. And we see the familiar orange glow around the sun. Again, it's barely visible to the eye, if at all, and it's just something that the camera sensor picks up, so it's not anything to worry about. As I mentioned earlier, the Daystar filter glasses felt a little bit darker than the Celestron ones. It's a little bit hard to tell, but here they are side by side with the Celestron on the left and the Daystar image on the right. The Daystar looks a little bit more orange. I don't know if it translates that well in video, but if it doesn't, that's actually good because as I said, if you're not switching back and forth between different brands of solar eclipse glasses, you are not gonna notice a difference at all. So these glasses are sold out at Celestron, but you can find them at Agena Astro or High Point Scientific for $12 for a pack of four, along with the booklet. These are some of the more expensive glasses at about $3 per pair if you don't count the booklet. And at Agena, I believe you need to purchase $25 worth of stuff to get free shipping. And at High Point Scientific, I don't think they do free shipping at all. So added cost to think about. Last but not least, the Celestron Eclipse Smart 2X Power Viewers. These are essentially just the same Celestron Eclipse Smart glasses. They use the same filters, but here they have uh, kind of 2X magnifiers in front uh, of the two eyepieces here. So the sun looks twice as big. So these are binocular-esque and they take you a little bit closer to the sun, but I can tell you that little bit makes quite a bit of difference. The sunspot that we saw earlier on the images uh, it was actually visible just to the eye. Like I didn't need to zoom in. So I was able to see it through my eclipse glasses. And with this, the group of sunspots looked even better. The design is pretty simple. It is just cardboard. It flattens pretty well. So you can put this into your pocket. And when you're ready, you just press down on the top and bottom so that the flap here goes up and the lenses in the front and the eye holes in the back line up and you can see through it. So it does have the Celestron Eclipse Smart filters in front. So this will only work on the sun. I will say that because of how these are constructed, they, they use glue, uh, lots of glue all over. It does feel like the more I use it, the more I do this, the more likely it is that it will fall apart. So I'm using this with the expectation that this eclipse is, will probably be the last time I use these. The objectives in the front and the back are plastic. So if you're handy and, and you can measure out how far they are in distance, you can take them off, put them in some plastic housing, maybe 3D print some plastic housing for this, attach it to binoculars that you already have, turn it into little monoculars or monoscopes, and you can reuse these for a long time. So those are plastic. The, the filter in front is also encased in plastic, so it's not like I'm poking the solar sheet itself. So in that sense, it's pretty good, but I don't think the cardboard will last forever. And because of how these were set up, I could not take a picture of them th through my camera. No matter how I held it, no matter how I attached it to my lens, it just wouldn't work. And it kind of makes sense. These aren't really meant for phones or cameras to be used with. So since these are pretty much the same uh, Eclipse glasses as the Celestron 
Eclipse Smart Glasses. Uh, let's pretend like this is the sun I saw with my Eclipse Glasses. Well, actually, that is the sun I saw with my Eclipse Glasses. And this is what I saw with the 2X Power Viewer. Just zoomed in twice. It's not cheating because, you know, same thing. From the several stores that I checked, I only found these in stock at B&H Photo and High Point Scientific. I'll link to both of them in the description below. And these cost $13 for a pack of two, and they come with a really nice eclipse map that covers the last eclipse in this upcoming eclipse, which uh, if you can kind of tell that I don't really have room on my wall, so that's staying in the box. That's all I have for you today. Links to all of these products are in the description below. Links to Agena Astro and High Point Scientific are affiliate links. You don't have to use them, but I would highly appreciate it if you would. If you get any of these glasses or any other glasses that I talked about or any glasses on the AAS list, try and store them and save these glasses for at least the next year. We are heading towards solar maximum and we're going to start seeing more and more sunspots on the sun. I expect and hope that many more of these sunspots will be visible just to the eyes without any kind of magnification required like the ones I saw in, during my testing. And just because the April 8th eclipse is over doesn't mean that's the end of eclipses. Sure, the next one in North America will be in 2044 and the next real one in the United States will be 2045. But there are other eclipses happening all over the world, including a whole bunch of partial eclipses that will be visible from our continent. So these glasses and filters should come in handy beyond this eclipse. Do you have your glasses yet? If not, there's still time, but not a lot. So get to it. Clear skies. Sounds like my sister.